In this audio clip, I'll be talking about God's common sense. Okay? Because the Most High has common sense. Okay? Yes. The Bible makes clear that God's ways are not our ways and that His ways are higher than our ways. It's just as the heavens are higher than the earth. That's how high God's ways are from our ways. Truth. You see? This shows us that God has more knowledge, more understanding, more wisdom, and more experience than us. You see, the common sense of humans is very limited and often based upon personal survival. Or let me say it better, all human common sense is based upon personal no survival. You see, God's common sense is based upon objective reality and that is to glorify him because he is the only stable being in the whole universe so that's why it's objectively important that he gets his glory that he gets his credit okay now why does god allow reprobate people to live and to have their way on earth you see, in, in the background, you see the, a picture of Kim Jong-un, who is the current leader in what they call North Korea. Well, this, this is, I've chosen this picture just because I know that many people in the West view Kim Jong-un as an evil from hell. See, I didn't choose this picture because I agree with that. You see, first of all, the only thing you see on this picture are two army officials laughing with a Freemason. Because remember, Kim Jong-un is a Freemason. He studied in Switzerland. Okay? But anyway, they're not born again. They're not following Jesus Christ. And they're persisting in not following Jesus Christ. So yes, they are evil. Based upon that, they are, rep they are narcissists. Okay? So... Why does God allow narcissists to remain alive on earth? Remember, earth is God's place. You see, human beings don't own anything. We have possessions of materials on earth and access to resources, but we don't own anything. So why does God allow such sick and harmful beings to exist on his earth? Well, it all comes down to common sense, people. Well, I'm going to explain to you. If God would, let me say, if God would kill every narcissist the moment they turn a narcissist, then, you know, human humanity would not have populated the earth. Because, remember, the, the first, our first ancestors became narcissists. Yes. And I'm not talking so much about Adam and Eve. Talk about the whole generations afterwards. You see? If God would have killed every narcissist, the moment they turned into a narcissist, humanity would not have survived. Because most of our ancestors were narcissists. They were very depraved and sick people. That's one uh, reason why God is not doing it. Secondly, narcissists, despite becoming demonic, they still have qualities and talents that they can benefit people that are saved. Okay? So you can have a narcissist that's a designer. You can have a narcissist that's a good chef. You can have a narcissist that's a good sailor. You see, God is allowing narcissists to live and till a certain extent he preserves them only to chant, only to turn their, e their evil into good. Narcissists want, cis, want to use their qualities they have been given by God. They are using it against God to do evil. But God is turning their evil around for good for those that are saved. So that's another reason why God does not annihilate narcissists right now. 
and there's a third reason. So both of those reasons are related to people that are saved. You see? For example, um, this is from the Bible. King uh, Solomon was king. He rejected God. He was a pagan. You see? He was on his way to hell. And the Most High decided to divide the nation of the Israelites into two groups. Ten tribes in the north, two tribes in the south. You see? And God used this one the Solomon's heir. When Solomon died, Rehobim, his son, became king, and Rehobim was very you see, he wasn't very wise, but God used his foolishness and the bad counsel of the youth to work out his purpose. And before God did this, God called a man, you see, Jerobim, and told him, I'm going to make you king over the ten tribes of Israel when Solomon dies, because those do the sin of the Solomon, the whole nation became corrupt, so I'm going to take measures. So when Solomon heard of this, he tried to kill Jerobim, so Jerobim fled. Now, after Solomon died, when Rehobim became king, and the ten tribes in the north decided to go their own way, Jerobim was, the, was an officer in the army, he was known among the people, so the people in the north decided, let's trust Jerobim. You see? They were not aware that God had already... They didn't, the, the ten tribes in the north, they didn't realize that this whole situation was arranged by God. The rebellion against Jerobim, in the north, the rebellion of the ten tribes against Rechabim was their choice. God didn't force them to do that. Okay, but God used the circumstance to work out his purpose. So, Jerobim became king of Israel, which was the ten tribe kingdom. And Rechabim remained the king of Judah, which had Judah and Benjamin as his inheritance. Okay? And the Re Rechabim wanted to fight war against Jerobim, but the Most High sent a prophet to tell Rechabim, I did this, so leave it alone. Now, Jerobim, when he was king of the ten tribes in the north, he noticed that every year Hebrews from the ten tribes would go to Jerusalem to the temple to pay a religious service. You see? Jerobim was afraid that if this would continue like this, then the whole Israelite nation would be reunited again and that he would, use his, would lose his throne. So what did Jerobim do? He had built pagan altars throughout the ten tribes so that to replace worship to the most high you see and um, now watch this God arranged the situation like this that Jerobim became king of the ten tribes so if God arranged it for him he had nothing to be afraid of and even if the and let's say let's say that God did decide to make him king if God decided to make him king, God could take the kingship away from him. Because it's God that arranged it. So he ought to be humble before God. So, and then here's another thing. God did tell uh, Jerobim that he is doing this because of the sin of Solomon and the corruption that was around among the Hebrew people. Okay? But Jerobim himself did not show any form of humility or resistance against what God promised him. Jerobim did not look for any prophets to hear from the Lord. Jerobim, he received an advantage as a head of state, and he used it against the Most High to benefit his own agenda. Now look at this. Why did God do this? This. Didn't the Most High know that Jerobim was unsaved, just like Solomon, and that Jerobim was no better than Solomon? Why did God permit it and gave an advantage to such a wicked individual? Look at this. Jerobim, when he became king, he married and had children, right? One of those children became born again and followed God. Unfortunately, that Believer died young due to an illness. 
You understand? So God sees the future. And God saw that if he would divide the nation in two and let Jeroboam become king, the Jeroboam would have kids and one of his children would be, be a believer. So to bring that believer into existence, God turned the circumstances around to bring that believer into existence and to preserve that believer. And not only that, because God separated the nation in two, God hindered evil from destroying the whole community at once. Yes, both Judah and the kingdom of Israel had iniquity, but ten of those tribes, the majority didn't, of those people didn't want to follow God anymore. They were just pretending. So that's why God separated them from Judah and God gave them over to a pagan king, Jeroboam, and all those other kings that came after Jeroboam were also wicked. You see? And all those believers that were born in the northern kingdom of Israel, God brought them into existence by separating the ten tribes from the southern kingdom. You see? And after about 252 years, the kingdom of Israel ended because the Assyrians kidnapped the whole population, except the very poor, and scattered them around the globe. And from there, those ten tribes fled to Europe. And from there, many of them went to Northern America, and they became the Native Americans. And some of the Hebrews remained in Europe and established cities over there also. You see? And from those scattered tribes, there were many that learned from the history and began to worship God. They became saved. So, by, so God foresaw the future and he arranged this future in such a way to bring believers into existence and to secure his heritage, his promise. So, why am I using this example? I'm using this example to teach you guys that when God allows a narcissist to remain alive, when God allows, or even when it seems as if God is advancing a narcissist, he's not advancing a narcissist. The only reason Jeroboam received advantage as king over the ten tribes is to secure God's plan. Not because God intended to bless Jeroboam, because God only blesses those that are saved. Unbelievers cannot be blessed by the Most High. Okay, so listen. You see, when you, I'm talking to you believers, you will be troubled and persecuted by narcissists. That's true. And it, it will bother you. So be honest about it. But remember, God's plan never fails. You see, those narcissists and those demons with those narcissists are not aware that they are just instruments in God's hands to exercise God's purpose. And when God's purpose is done, God will break those instruments and throw them in the lake of fire. You see? So, I am not bothered with the Illuminati, with the tough Freemasons, with the Luciferians and Satanists, because they are only al allowed to live by the most high to so that God will work out his purpose through them. They are not intended to cooperate with the Most High. They don't want anything to do with the Most High. They just want to do evil, do their thing. But God is using that to advance his kingdom. You see? So, that being said, people, now you understand why the God is merciful to unrepented people. It's not because they deserve it, nor because God agrees with their, with their wickedness. No. God is reaping hot, burning coals of fire upon their heads. And by that, they have no excuse on the day, on Judgment Day, when they are separated from the rest of mankind and thrown in hell forever. Well, that being said, you all, be at peace. Jesus' grace be with you.